okay so i wanted to start today's class with this this is if you i'm sure you don't recall long time back uh, this was something that i had flashed in the first lecture right introductory lecture so at that time this probably didn't make any sense but this structure could make some sense now right so uh, in the sense that it is m1 m2 forms the input pair of the disk pair m3 m4 form the active loads in the current mirror format this mm m0 mm2 the ones in the bottom they are essentially giving you support for the current required to support or bias all the stacks and what is m5 m5 is the pmos on top of this one <laughs> so what is um, can you comment on uh, what is uh, this second stack like that is the m5 mm2 what type of configuration is that it's a two stage two but ah uh, mm2 is the current bias and m5 is uh, it, the combination of m5 and mm2 what is that Between common source, common gate, common drain. Yeah. Right. It's a common source amplifier with a PMOS input. Right. So PMOS input stage is a common source amplifier. So essentially, this is a differential amplifier being followed by a common source amplifier. And uh, the common source amplifier, as we saw, can give you limited gain. And you can think of it in such a way that the gain of the common source amplifier is getting boosted by the Differential amplifier. Right? <laughs> we are getting two stages of gain. So that is one way to look at it. And the other way that we approach this problem was, uh, was the fact that here I haven't shown any load connected to V naught. So you might have as well have a RL connected to V naught. But uh, if the V naught, if that load, if the second stage weren't there and the load would have been connected to V one, then obviously uh, the gain that you would have gotten would have been limited by the load that it was driving. So that would have been a problem and so we wanted to isolate the load from the differential amplifier because we want large gain. So we don't want the differential amplifier gain to be killed by the load. So we had to put something between the differential amplifier and the load. And one configuration was the source follower, source follower buffer, which is a better configuration in terms of driving a load. But the issue of source follower was the output swing was limited. Right? So output swing was not going to the maximum possible that is the higher side wouldn't have been VDD minus one V overdrive, but it would have been one VGS drop. So that is something that has become less and less popular over the years. Initially, source follower architecture used to be quite popular when the supply voltage used to be quite high, like five volts, 10 volts, and so on. So the case in point is your 741 of them. That also has one version of a source follower uh, second stage. But uh, nowadays, it's simply because your central and uh, VDD has scaled down and central voltage hasn't scaled down as much uh, for different reasons. So the force follower architecture to drive an output stage has become less and less popular. So the, the other alternative is instead of putting a source follower, we put a common source stage, which this is what this what it is doing. And we discussed this in the previous class. Uh, the good thing about this is V naught can go as high as almost one set, one V overdrive close close to VDD, and bottom side also it can go one uh, one V overdrive near to ground, right? So you can get almost rail to rail swing, right? This is the best possible swing that you can get without compromising on on gain. So, uh, but the issue with this architecture is the second stage gets loaded. The second stage gets loaded with uh, with RL, so the gain of the second stage can get compromised. But that's okay in the sense that you can make up for that by simply increasing the gain in the first stage. Or if you are not sure that, uh, I mean, if you're not, if you know that this is not sufficient, then you can put another intermediate stage between these two. You can make it a three-stage amplifier. Uh, you can go crazy with this, like you can go three, four, five, and whatever you want. I mean, in that, there are applications where you require open loop gains of a million. 10 million. So in that case, because obviously one or two stages will not suffice. You have to go to three, four stages. So that so those things, those, those things are routinely done, right? If you if you choose a carrier in such a design, you will be seeing uh, various aspects of this uh, uh, throughout your career. Okay, fine. So let's yes, right, exactly. So this is an open loop configuration. The feedback loop is not shown. 
So now, okay, so since we are staring at this, uh, can you comment on if I have to put it in negative feedback and let's say you need again feedback, right? That is k equal to one. So V naught will either connect to A or B. Where should I V not connect V naught to? B. Why? <laughs> Minus Why? How do you decide which is the minus because sign? The current, the current Assume the capacitor is open. In, in the incremental sense. So let's assume, let's start off with B, right? So assume that B naught is connected to B. Okay, so now let's yank B up. If we pull B up, what will happen to V1? It will increase or decrease? It will decrease. If V1 decreases, what happens to V0? No, sorry. If V increases, V1 decreased. V1 reduced, right? If V1 reduces, what happens to V0? It goes up or down? V1 goes down, V0? Goes up. It's a common sense amplifier, right? So overall, if B increases, V not increases, right? So then B is not the correct terminal, right? So you have to connect B, B not to A, right? So that's how the negative feedback will get filtered. And this is the unity and negative feedback. If you, if you want to increase the gain, like you want to gain a gain of two and so on, then you have to put a resistor divider from B not to ground and tap the midpoint. Right, so because you want to do get, you have to uh, get a stable ratio. The stable ratio you get by putting a voltage divider. That is k equal to two. Right, so in, uh, in that configuration. Yes. 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 Uh, a increases. V one will increase. Yes, Correct. Yes. So v one increases. V uh, one Yes. Right. So. You can start off with any either A or B, assume it to be whatever negative or positive as, as you please, and then, then go around the loop and see whether your initial hypothesis is right. If it's right, your choice is fine, otherwise, it's the other choice. That's all. A increasing will increase B naught, B1, yes. Yeah, right. So if A increases the incremental current, you can think of it in two ways, right? If A, if A increases, what, what happens to the current through M1? It increases when current through M1 that is going down increases. Correct. So that incremental current has to go through M2 into V1. Correct. Because it cannot go through M M0. M0 is a current source, right? So ideally, so if it cannot go into M0, so the incremental current flows into V1. Since it flows into V1, it increases. And there is another thing that M3, M4 also has a part of incremental current that is flowing from top to bottom. Correct. So you have two two sources of current which are forcing V1 to increase. And so naturally V1 increases. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, we were uh, we were uh, we started we started frequent start we started tried to introduce uh, frequency compensation. Uh, we didn't have enough time in the previous class. In this class, we'll start with more formally with frequency compensation, and we'll go slightly faster because we have done all these things in E two fifty. What did that mean? What? Yeah. 
let me restart my issue.